Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. How's everybody doing out there tonight or this afternoon or whatever time you're watching it? George and I are thrilled to have as our guest this week the one and only Rick Wasserman. Hey, Rick. Hey, hey, how you doing? All right, we're doing just great. If you got a question for Rick or for George and I or whatever, put it in the chat room. Jeff Holman is there. And we've got lots of stuff to talk about, about how to make yourself more bookable when it comes to your auditions. Ooh, yeah. So stay tuned for that. Coming up now this on thing VoiceOver on? Body Shop. It's on. Go for it. <laughs> Stop that. That's right. We'll be right From there. From the outer Stein reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together... From the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, thought we'd just throw that one in there. We're hey, building a new, new intro. Yeah, something a little bit different. I gave Jacob a task. Animate this. And he did it. He followed he, he through. He did. It's like, All right, you, you still working on it? Oh, yeah, I got to work on that animation. <laughs> Busy kid. What can I say? Anyway, I'm Dan Leonard, by the way. And I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B S. All righty. B S. Yes, it is. That's right, Jeff. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, that's enough, Jeff. Right. Thank you. That's enough. Jeez. And cut. All right. Man. It's only the thing. The only thing he understands. He needs anyway. more attention. He's being on HBO just isn't enough for Jeff. That's right. Being in an Academy Award-winning film, it's like <laughs> you know. Suddenly, it's gone God. totally to his head. Anyway, uh, we're here to talk about voiceover. That's what our job is. George and I are voiceover people, engineers. I'm a professional voice actor, and we like to talk about voiceover. But the best thing we can do is bring on the people who are the top people, the people who make a difference, the innovators in this industry, the people that make a difference. And so let's introduce our guest tonight. Rick Wasserman is perhaps best known as the 12-year signature voice of AMC Network and for voicing Thor and Hulk for Marvel Animation. Rick can also be heard on popular video game series such as Call of Duty, Diablo, Starcraft, and Batman Arkham. Plus, Rick is, is a very successful voice acting coach. Uh, his business is called Bookable dot, uh, BookableVO.com. And along with Mr. Widom here, built the tri booth which we'll talk a little bit about a little bit later on let's welcome to our show once again the one and only rick wasserman How hey you doing? i'm very well thanks for having me i think what is this my okay thank you george really please my ego is already uh what my third or fourth time here I, with you I, I think it's the fourth oh boy wow you were on with with Lori allen once yeah i was out of town and you've been on yeah. with us, me twice so yeah 
And and then you came in and you built the tri booth in here once. Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> <So> that's <laughs> four. <laughs> that's four. Wow. What do we so, get for the fifth one? A toaster or what do we get? Were they? Would we consider you a friend of the show or? Yeah, that works at this point. Uh, how <laughs> exciting! I'll, I'll pin him up on the wall here. Please, I'll sit on the shelf show. behind you. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So welcome to welcome back, Rick. I mean, thank you're, you. You're you're a busy guy, as as we all know. Uh, and of course, if anybody else has a question for for Rick, just put it in the chat room, and please, he'll be thrilled to answer. But I got lots thrilled. of great questions uh, for him as well. That you're you're a well-rounded actor. You, you stage, screen, yeah. Yeah. voiceover. <laughs> What came first? What came first? Uh, I am a trained theater actor first. Uh, So I know people that do VO come from all areas, right? There's uh, people that do radio. There's a lot of radio people. There's stand-up comedians. Uh, There are people that just wanted to start doing voiceover, right? In fact, I recall when I was on The Avengers, uh, many of the, we recorded the Avengers all together. So all the Avengers are in the room at the same time. There's 15 oh. mics. It's very exciting. Nice. And when you're not reading, when you're not in a scene, you're sitting down. And I'd say more than half of the people, uh, when they sat down, were reading comics. Like this, this was the life. This is what they wanted to do, uh, which is very exciting. But me, I came from theater, did theater first. Mm-hmm. So like. Just basic theater, you know, musical theater, Shakespeare, what, what basic what, theater, not basic, uh, basic theater. I mean, you know, crossing all of the. Oh no, no, of- sure. You know, I think I found that I was in more musicals uh, than not. Although I'm not, I'm not the world's greatest singer. I can schmaltz my way through a number. I was in uh, most popular show was I was in Lion King on Broadway for three years, so I was doing that. And while I was doing that, I was also doing. HBO and AMC voiceover. So, uh, and I got to do television shows during the day. So I did my requisite Law and Order, and I did all that kind of thing. So I really was kind of multimedia at the time. Now I'm in uh, Los Angeles. I have kind of calmed down a bit, mostly doing voiceover. I do a show once in a while, um, and of course I am coaching every day and building the tri booth. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> literally doing just that. <laughs> Believe it or not, everybody. Yeah. He's tying them all together. Every well, we'll truck you get has yeah. Rick's fingerprints and his wife's. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do wipe them off first, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, you use a little hand sanitizer. I do. Each time. It. It's just, it's really important. So, one of the things that you've been doing uh, that, you know, that we've always been noticing is uh, your coaching business, uh, bookablevo.com. Yeah. How did you, I mean, everybody's like, you know, once they do voiceover, like, oh, I got a coach. <laughs> but you're very successful at it. And, and, you know, just the name, I think, says it all that, you know, people want to be able to book work. And For sure. there's hundreds of auditions just flying in and out of there. And what is it that makes the difference? How is it that somebody books over somebody else? even if they don't have a great voice, because as we know, having a great voice has very little to do with voiceover these yeah, days. You're so right. Uh, yeah, especially now when the trend is highest authenticity, because voiceover is a performing art, like singing, acting, dancing, it is subject to the whims of trends. And the trend has been for a while, highest authenticity, most natural, most real. And, uh, and because of that, I think, I don't know about you, Dan, but it's harder for guys like you and I who have what sounds like, you know, I wake up in the morning and I sound like I'm hosting a game show. My voice just (laughs) sounds like this and a little harder to book some of the work nowadays. Now, certainly there's a place for us and that is promos and narration and trailers and stuff. And that's been great. Um, But I think uh, what keeps people working, what, what is the trick? What books work? No one knows. No one knows. It's impossible to know what they want. So I tell everyone that works with me, give up on that. Divorce yourself from trying to please people because chances are most producers don't know exactly what they want until they hear it. All I can train you to do, all anyone can train you to do, is to do your best work. That is, tell the richest, most vivid, specific, clearest sort of you-centric story you can. That's your job. And then as soon as you leave the booth and you've done whatever editing you're going to do, clearest sort of you... Say it again. It was so good I said it twice. Say it it three times. Make make sure Uh, everyone can hear it. But but once you're done and it's all edited, you let go of it. You let it go. It's done. You don't ask your agent about it. Hey, what did Kleenex think about my... Don't ask them. It's done. It's finished. If you happen to book it, you'll know. Your agent will call you and you can have a little party. But until then, the next thing you do is work on the next audition. Yeah. And ultimately, you'll book. 
Yeah. How many times, you know, if you know, if you're you're coming back from the studio after doing an audition and you're like halfway, you know, down Burbank Boulevard and it's like, why didn't I do it like this? Yeah. You know, and they'll say, is that all you want to do? Is there anything else? You, well, I think I got it. It's like, nah, it never yeah, never. Yeah. It's impossible to know. You just do you. You just do your best. And someone will like it. Some producer out there is just waiting to hear your voice. Just got to give it to them and be ready. Right. A lot of times you hear uh, people say that what is it? One of the things that helps you book is not doing it like everybody else. But then mm. again, if you're just being yourself, then you're not like being like everybody else. That's right. I, Dan, I think that's brilliant advice for anyone. I tell people if I could give you one piece of advice to keep your head above the throngs in this incredibly saturated industry, especially since the pandemic where everyone who was on stage had to find their way into a closet and start recording to earn a wage, um, you should embrace your voice and your read. It's the best thing you can do. Embrace, give up on trying to sound like anything you've heard before don't do your Don LaFontaine, don't do your, let go of all that and just embrace who you are. Be that singular color in the big box of crayons. Somebody wants that color right now. They're just waiting for you to do it. They're just waiting for you to just be you. Unfortunately, we have either directly or indirectly been listening to voiceover our whole lives and we have in our head how it should sound. And as soon as you say commercial to someone, they might engage their commercial sound and we don't want that anymore. We just want you to sound like you talking to someone you know. So if you can get back to that and kind of wipe off that shellac, that, that varnish, you'll book. You'll book because you will be your own sound. Yeah, got to sand it down a little bit. Get you got to sand it down, yeah, Get of rid course. of the sheen just, yeah. a, just a little bit. That's right. <laughs> Once again, we're talking with Rick Wasserman. If you've got a question for him, we're going to get to your questions. So write them in the chat room, and Jeff, uh, <laughs> Jeff will get them to us somehow. Jeff Holman is in there. He is like reading all of them and he's typing madly into our into our notes so we know what you're asking. And uh, that's really important. So, you know, I, it, it's one of those things about voiceover. You, you, you audition, you, it goes off into the ether and you're like, come back. Mm. Um, but why, you know, you, you wait to see and usually, as they say, no news is good news. Uh, but why do people not book in your opinion what what are some of the the major mistakes that people make i mean aside from the obvious of not knowing what the hell they're doing yeah um i think um you don't need any tricks i think let go of tricks people that do that thing like when they slate i have a real pet peeve with this when they slate it sounds like hey it's rick wasserman coming at you hoping you're having a good day here we go with take number one i mean you're not you're not <laughs> setting up you know top 40s uh, let all that go just say your name like you're introducing yourself Rick Wasserman. That's enough. And by the way, I have in my lifetime, I don't know if you've ever done this, but I have booked work off of my slate. And by the way, I'm not tooting my horn there. It was because they didn't like my audition, but they liked my <laughs> slate. They thought, they thought my slate sounded authentic, like I was introducing myself. And then all of a sudden, I'll start doing a voice. No, 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 don't do any of that. You've got a great voice. Just talk. You know, so sometimes it's just that. Uh, the other pet peeve I have about slating, and I think this gets people in trouble, is that their slate does not match the world of what follows. So you don't want to hear something like, like Rick Wasserman at St. Jude's Cancer Hospital for Children. <laughs> you know, yeah, right. yeah it's, it's distasteful. So your slate should match the same universe as what follows. Makes sense. So how can people change those odds? I mean, they're, they're sending out, I mean, some people just audition, 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 and, yeah. you know, and, and get nothing in return. Yeah. You know, and it's, it, you know, it's the, the, the law of diminishing returns. How do you change those odds? Well, there's four things you can do. There's four things you can do that will better your chances. I mean, there's a lot more than four, but, but the four things I could tell you so that you can earn a living wage, the things you can do right now is one, train. Don't just think that it will come to you. Don't just think that voiceover is merely a gut-driven, impulse-driven uh, art. No, you need to study. You need to train. You need to have a routine. We'll talk about that in a second. You need some sort of process, like all artists do. Someone hands you a script. Now, what do you do? What, steps, what steps can you take to get from this analog, this paper with words on it, to 
a recorded audition that, as I said, is rich and vivid and specific and clear and sounds like you, either to be uh, turned into your agent for consideration for uh, a, a booking or maybe it's a booking itself ready for broadcast. So you need training. You need a good demo, right? An actor has a reel, model has a portfolio, voiceover actor must have a demo that is up to date and it must demonstrate two things, I think. First of all, it's not about how long you can make it. I know even 90 second demos are not in vogue anymore. Now 60 seconds is enough and probably you can get away with 20 seconds because it's not about how many spots you have. It's really about, sh it should look, or not should look, but it should sound like you on your best day. Like your headshot should look like you on your best day. Um, it, should, it should sound like you, which you think, well, that's obvious, it'll sound like you. But I don't mean putting on voices. I mean it should sound authentically like you, and it should feel like you. So I believe that if you have nailed your demo, when someone listens to it, instead of saying, uh, oh, that's Dan doing some good commercials, that's nice. Instead, they'll say, listen to that, that is classic Dan. That is so something Dan would say. Did he write this? Now you know you've nailed it, because you've not only uh, tapped into what you sound like, but it's what you feel like, your rhythms, mm. your sense of humor, your opinions, all of that captured on your demo. So who cares if it's 90 seconds or 60 seconds? It's not about the quantity, it's about the quality. And that uh, is the same for auditions. I don't care if you're auditioning 400 times. You can have 400 awful auditions. If you have five good auditions and you book one, you'll make rent. And yeah, that, that's the thing. It's usually like one one's job is going to pay for an awful lot of stuff if yeah. it's the right job. And may lead to more jobs, and they and, usually do. And it always does. And that's yeah. the most important thing. Once you get a job, make them a client for life. For and sure. That's, you know, and that's that's a whole other story in itself. Yeah. How many demos do you have, and how many different categories do you, do you put out there? I have uh, demos. Well, because I have a demo company, I have demos in all areas. <laughs> oh, of course. Um, and at this point, my demos, uh, I'm proud to say, they're filled with all produced work. Uh, so they're not, you know, fake spots. They're, they're all, you know, real work. Real. Which ultimately, Reels yeah. Real. Exactly. So that's what you want, ultimately. Uh, the only thing I don't have is an audiobook demo. And there's a reason for that. Cause, <laughs> because I can't read. No. <laughs> I, it's, <laughs> it's because I'm not, in life, a very good reader. That is, when left to my own devices, sitting down to read a book, I'm just too fidgety. It's hard for me to focus, and mm -hmm. I would be miserable in the booth that long. When I do documentary narration, I'm fine. I just did something for Shark Week. That's fine, you know. That, but but audiobooks, for whatever reason, it's I I can't keep it together to stay still that long. So it doesn't work for me. I don't put myself out there for audiobooks. To be sure, there are people out there that are born for it. They love to read, and I always say, well, if you love to read, why not read for other people and make a dime while you're at it. When you did the, the Shark Week work, is that directed? All di directed? Or you it is on? directed. Yeah, yeah, it is directed. So it's like, and it that's might nice be too. long, but the time passes. Cause that's you're, right. You're, it's, it's almost like a conversation, right? It's like, yeah, that's it's, absolutely right. And I like having that. Quiet space by yourself. Yeah, that's for hard for me. Hours. But having a little collaboration always feels more, more like theater to me. And that's the kind of thing I'm always wanting. I want yeah. that kind of uh, collaborative art experience. Yeah, I would think for sh for Shark Week you'd actually want to be in a shark cage, doing that. That's a that's a new idea for for Tri Booth uh, two point oh, <laughs> stainless steel. <laughs> <laughs> well, once again, we're talking with Rick Wasserman. If you got a question for him, throw it in the chat room, and Jeff Holman will get that question to us. Uh, is, you know, auditioning and, and, and book and work is, I mean, that's essentially what we do. Some people say it's our job is to audition, and then the other stuff is... Uh, I mean, it depends on who you are. I mean, <laughs> That's true. You know, there are some people who they audition over their iPhone and suddenly, you know, and they're just book and work. But then That's again, true. they're well-known people. And I won't mention any names. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's really, really hard when you audition and audition and audition and nothing comes your way. And then once in a while, some copy will come in front of you and you're like, uh, this one's mm. for me. Mm. And you just know it, and you know, and when the phone rings or the email chimes in, it's like I knew that. Yeah, you knew it. You felt it. Yeah. I wish that happened more often for everybody. You yeah. know, we we all should have that. But in the meantime, that's the grind, and I agree. That is the work to me. The work for me is the auditioning. Yeah, because that's the that's, well, that's work. That's easy. Yeah. That's, yeah. 
that's you know that's when you really have to do it. So yeah. why, why don't we go through because we were talking about consistency. Yeah, we talked about you have a routine, and we can put yeah. up a graphic here so we can oh, yeah, actually please. go through it, and then yeah. you and I can run through something. Yes, and, exactly, and, and, and we'll try that. Okay, let let's me, do that. Let me share my, let me share this particular piece of uh, amazing stuff here, and there it is. Hey, look at that. There it is for Bookable VoiceOver, a VO workflow. Uh, and here is a routine. Now, listen, this is not the Rick Wasserman method. This is a method of storytelling. And to be sure, you could apply this to other uh, art forms, theater, st uh, screen acting, writing, uh, poetry. But here it's focused on voiceover and for voiceover people. So what I'm suggesting is if you have a routine, it doesn't have to be this one. It doesn't have to be in this order. I'm saying the only mistake you could make is not having routine. That is like getting a script in your hand and just having at it. Chances are you're not going to book very often. It's just too wild, just too haphazard, uh, waiting for the muses to descend on you. Don't wait for that. Let's do the work. So uh, the green box at the top is where you begin. Your routine begins when you receive a script. As soon as you have it in your hands, bing, you're in phase one, which I would call work. During this phase, it's your research and rehearsal. I recommend this be done outside of the booth. Don't do the work in the booth. You might be too tempted to just record it. Uh, I'll just record it. No. Take the time. Go outside. Sit down. Have it in front of you on a tablet or a piece of paper and be prepared to work through this. This phase ultimately should take five to ten minutes. Still, a lot of people won't do it. They'll get the script in their hands and they want to jump right in the booth. And I think that's a big mistake if you want a book. Phase one work. If you were a stage actor, this would be called uh, rehearsal, dramaturgy, research, right? For voiceover actors, this is where you do your script analysis process. I outline here ten steps. Ten ste By the way, that wasn't me trying to be clever like the commandments. It just worked out to be ten. <laughs> 10 steps to get you from, I don't know what this thing is, it's just a bunch of words on paper, to I know exactly what I'm going to do in the booth. I'm ready. So you do all this work. You do the work so that you have the luxury of going into phase two and playing. And when I say play, I mean to perform and record the voiceover inside your booth. Okay? So phase one work, script analysis. You got the script in your hand. There are 10 steps here. These, Dan, are scaffolded steps. Now, you may decide to do them in a different order, but I put them in this order uh, for a reason. If you want to know the complete ins and outs of it, let's train together. Come take a class with me. But I'll kind of briefly go through them now. The first step is read number one. And Dan, I would like to do read number one with you in just a moment, but I'll move on. Okay. Okay. The first thing you want to do is read it. The second thing is to warm up or not. And the reason I say that is because of the trend we're in. This incredibly authentic, this incredibly um, naturalistic trend that we're in right now, I find that with a lot of voice actors, especially those who used to be stage actors or film actors, the more they warm up, the more they sound like voice actors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and all that stuff that makes you sound authentic goes away. So it's something I think we should preserve. So before you start doing all of your tongue trills and lip tr I say you only warm up those things that are causing you issue today. I can't get enough air underneath me. My articulation is off. Or they want me to have a dialect. Or they want me to have more texture in my voice. Or I need to resonate from a different resonator. Fine. Then warm up. But otherwise, you don't have to. Okay. Step three. Classify. What is this? It's a 30-second television commercial. You need to classify your script first. Every script you get. And that gives you everything you need to know. Now that you know it's 30 seconds, you know the range of time you have to play with. Once you know if it's television or radio, you know how dynamic you have to be. Remember, radio is like doing a solo. A television commercial, a commercial in this case, is like doing a duet. It's you and the picture equally telling the story. So you don't have to do as much as you might have to do on radio. Uh, step, five, uh, step four, product. In this case, uh, for commercials, what is the product you're selling? But we're not done. Once you identify the product, you've got to ask yourself, what's its brand? Remember, a commercial is just a little story whose purpose is to sell a product or service. It's advertising, so you have to consider its brand. Or if you don't want to call it brand, which I don't like calling it brand, I call it its personality. If that product was a person, what's his personality like? Okay, once you identify that, we move on to why. This is a great question. If you don't ask yourself, start asking yourself. Why does this voiceover exist? 
Why was this commercial made? Why did McDonald's spend money to have this commercial produced? Why? What is the core takeaway? Why is that important? Because when you're in phase three, review, when you listen back to your work, that core reason why better be crystal clear. Otherwise, you failed the brief. Step six is specs and direction. I like not considering the specs and direction until right now. That means you've had the first half of this script analysis process to just let you be you and trust that the sound you make and the story you have to tell is right. You don't know if it's what they want, but it's right. It makes sense to you. Now we look at the specs and directions. The way I handle them is I tell people to play the got it, need it game. The same way that you had baseball cards with friends and you'd lay them out and you play the got it, need it game. Got it, got it, got it, got it, need it. You're looking through the specs and directions for the need it's, for the outlier. What don't you have? As opposed to trying to think you have to layer every spec and direction on top of your voice, assume you have them. Assume your agent did their work and now all you have to do is find the one, two, or three specs or directions that don't fit your wheelhouse. Right. And, and a lot of and a lot a lot of times people go for the specs first. That's like the That's first right. Minutes. I I wouldn't. I don't recommend it. Uh, and then uh, seven and eight, I believe, are that's the difference between booking and not booking. The technical perspective, that is, looking at this script technically. It's a voiceover script written by a copywriter. I'm a voice actor. I'm going to add my voice to it. There'll be a director, an engineer, and a producer. We look at it technically, like what's under the hood, what's behind the curtain. And then step eight is looking at the same script but not technically. Now it's not a commercial, it's just a story. Who am I? Who am I talking to? What do I want from them? How am I gonna get it? Okay. Uh, nine, scoring the script. This means notation, doing a little John Madden on your script. Uh, and I mean very little. Again, we should use our scripts like sheet music. We need them. Don't look away from them. Stay with them, stay at them. I don't put too much notation because I don't wanna get confused. Just enough to help me on the fly. And then finally, step 10 is read number two. Now you're going to read it again, but this time you're informed by the previous nine steps. And I find that at that point, and by the way, when I say read number two, it really could be read number two, three, four, as many times as you need. Stopping and starting, however you want to do it. This is for you. This is the bridge step to get into the booth so that when you're in the booth, you know just what you're doing. You know who you are and who you're talking to, what you want from them, the action you're going to play. Uh, phase two, you perform and record, and then you get out, and then you listen back to your work, and you ask yourself this, this is important, did I tell the desired story? Did I tell the story? Is the reason why, in this case a commercial, is it clear? If it's not, go back in. It's okay. There's no shame in that, right? That's what you do. Here's what you don't do when you get out of the booth. Listen back to it and go, it was great, or it sucked. Don't do that. Neither one of those will do you any good. It's nothing. That doesn't help you. Whether it's a good job or a bad job, it was funny, it wasn't funny. Who cares about that? In fact, that's not up to you to decide. Someone else is going to decide that. All you can ask yourself is, did I tell the story? Was it clear? Were there any glaring mess ups where I flubbed a word or you hear a big mouth sound or, or maybe I, there was a, a, I didn't even a billboard or highlight the name of the product. Oh, I got to go back in. That's all your job is there. Then you select your takes. Put them in whatever order you want, maybe do a little light editing if necessary, re-record if you have to, label the sucker, and send it. And then you're at the end, and that little red box at the bottom says, your routine is finished. Let it go. It is a stoic exercise. When you're finished this process, be done. Take a breath. Don't wonder if it was as good as it could be. Will they like it? You don't know. Who, who knows? Let it go and move on to the next audition. Or get something to eat, you know, relax. Which I do after every audition. There you go. Uh, or, or go to the bathroom, which is in the house. Meaning <laughs> hey, let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, those. The, the, most people don't think about this stuff. I mean, if you've been training as a voice actor and you've taken lots of classes, you know, these are, these are all important points. And I think those of us that have been doing this for years and years and years, it's all, you know, it's, it's part of who we are. That's we, right. Yeah, it's under your skin now, Dan, which is the best way to be. You know, once you work through a routine enough, then it's just part of you. I don't even know that when I work on scripts now, I'm actually thinking, okay, step one, I'm going to, right now, for me, it's like that movie, The Matrix, when you see those screens and the kind of digital green letters dripping down, they look into it and they can just see it. Now, when I get a script in my hand, I just see it. 
and most of the work's been done. But that's a quarter century worth of work right there. Right. Um, you know, but but get to that point. Get to it's wonderful. It's a really lovely place to be where you don't have to think so much. Just enjoy. Right. Once again, we're talking with Rick Wasserman, and we were talking about how to book more. Yeah. What, what, what's it going to take to get you to book those auditions? You work hard to get them. You know, it was like back when I sold life insurance. It's like <laughs> you make an appointment, you got to go to it. Oh, I got to talk to somebody uh, anyway. So you you gave me a script here for the yeah. DC lottery, yes. the radio spot. Uh, yeah. Let's go through that and let's yeah. see if you can make me do it better than I might normally do it. So here's can I what I'd be like a to do. Can I just be a heckler over here? I'd rather you didn't. Um, okay. Here's what I'd like to do. Um, I don't know if you could put the script on screen. That would be ideal. That would be I terrific. Can. And get I rid can. of George. We know what he looks like. Yeah, it's true. All right. <laughs> you can heckle from afar. Right. Okay. Share screen window. And there it is. Boom. Bang. There it is. The DC lottery. Okay. Dan, here's what I'm going to do. We don't have to run through this whole process. All I want to do is step one of the script analysis process, which is read number one. Just gonna read it. But the first read that you ever do is maybe the most important step in my estimation. This is your introduction to these words. You're gonna spend the next five, 10 minutes with these words. You're, you're hoping to earn some money saying these words out loud. In, in another phase, you're gonna be in the booth recording this and hopefully making it sound like you coined these words. So you need to get you need to get friendly with them real soon. So I have five conditions that you should take on in order to make this first read as effective as possible. And here they are, and you're gonna do them. Okay. The first one is you read out loud. I know that's obvious, but a lot of people don't. They'll read in their head. And I think it's a big mistake. You, you, you need to engage your instrument from the beginning. Remember, when you're, when you're in the booth recording it, you're gonna be saying out loud, why not start right now? It does you no good to read it in your head. Besides, as you know, some copy, not all, but some copy's got some problems. Spelling, <laughs> grammar, grammar, syntax. Punctuation. Or long run-on sentences and there's no place to breathe. Listen, if you read inside <laughs> your head, you won't know that. You won't know it until you say it out loud and you're gasping for air. So you say it all out loud now so that before you leave this step, you can correct everything. Make it so it makes sense to you, not for anyone else, just you. You're the only one there. No one's looking over your shoulder, unless you're training with me. Then I am, just for that time. But then you're on your own. So you read it out loud. That's the first condition. The second condition is you read everything on the page, everything. Don't just read the scripted part out loud. Read everything out loud. Why? Because when you say it out loud, remember, we never have to memorize these scripts. That's a good thing. You don't have to memorize it. But the kinetic nature of saying everything out loud will help you remember important information for the future steps coming up. Three, four, five, six, all the other steps in the script analysis process. It sort of puts all that information on a little waiting room bench in your head, just waiting for you to figure it out. So when you get to the step that asks, how long is this commercial? You'll go, 30 seconds. Well, how do you know? Because I read it out loud. I said, rescue dog, 30 seconds. So you will have had that sense memory of it. So uh, the third condition is that you treat this as a functional cold read. That means you don't skim. You don't go, today I went to the lottery. Today I went, you heard, you've heard people do this. Today I won $450 with the perfect time. Don't do that. That doesn't help anyone. You're never going to record it like that. Don't read it like that. A functional cold read is you are making sense of these words as you read it. How do you do that? Like a miracle, right? How, how do you make sense of it while you're reading? Well, you know, you do a little deducing. You know, you sleuth your way through it. If the script was uh, at the top, it said Pampers, already your brain should be engaging your Pampers gear. And you know that it should probably be soft and, uh, uh, and kind of caring and empathetic and it changes your read and then you read the first line you love your baby oh well now I know I'm probably talking to a parent maybe the baby's in the room so it you adjust your read as you go a functional cold read the fourth condition is you endeavor to make this sound conversational why? Because that's the trend we're in right now. Now, you may get down to the specs and they say, we don't want it conversational. We want it to sound like an announcer. But as you know, that's going to be rare these days, right? <laughs> Almost never. So, so I it's say... It's just a parody of an announcer. That's right. That's exactly right. Just some lampoon. But for now, endeavor to make it feel conversational. How do you do that? 
Well, I recommend you just give yourself a little generic pre-life at the beginning, like, hey, Dan, someday I might win millions. There it is. Hey, Dan was enough to make it feel more like a conversation than just starting abruptly. Someday I might win millions, right? Just a little pre-life, like, right. you know, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but someday, I, there it is, right? I find myself feeling more conversational because I'm in a conversation. And the fifth and final condition is an interesting one. You don't have to do it, but you should be able to say this script in your own words. You should be able to. If someone snatched it out of your hands, you should be able to basically say the conceit in your own words. Now, I'm not going to make you do it. You don't have to do it, but you should be able to. Okay, so let's do this now. You're just going to read this script. So you're going to read everything on the page. You're going to say it out loud. And when you get to the scripted part, the part you would record, say it to me. Have a conversation with me. So instead of, someday, I might win millions playing the DC, not that. Okay, of course you know. All right, here we go, Dan, in your own time. Okay, we're going to read it once, we're going to take a break, and then we're going to make it even better. Oof. So, okay. All right. So, Rick, someday I might win millions. No, no, Dan, yeah. from the top, read the everything top. Oh, on the page. DC, that's right. DC Lottery Radio, one rescue dog, 30 seconds. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Rick, someday yeah. I might win millions playing the DC Lottery. Uh -huh. Today I won $450, and the timing was perfect. Because oh. just the other day, I came across a six-month-old rescue dog. Aww. And even though it was love at first sight, I wasn't sure about the extra expense. Mm. Thanks to the D.C. lottery, I won a new best friend. And hey. I was able to make a donation so that other people could have the supplies they need when they take their new friend home. Uh -huh. Which goes to show that no matter the size of the prize you win from the D.C. lottery, yeah. every win is a win. Dan, it's like you've done this before. It's beautiful. I, once, All right, read the twice. specs. Keep going. Read okay. the specs. Spec, men 45 to 65. Uh -huh. I actually fit that. At the hey! End. Yeah. Uh, unique, down to earth, a friend, authentic. Uh -huh. Generally, these spots are supposed to feature real people. So they want to hear folks being super conversational, not polished, not necessarily clean. The more stammers or searching for words you do, the better. Well, to a point. Great. Anyway, all right, Dan, let's take a quick break. Go, yeah. ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Go I was ahead. just going to say, that is a brilliant first read. Do it like that, everyone. That's it. You made sense of it. You played through it. It sounded like you. You didn't put on a voiceover voice. You made everything incredibly clear. Now you have set yourself up to do the rest of this process. Great. Well, let's take a break, and let's do it even better next time. We'll be right back after these important messages with Rick Wasserman. Don't go away. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies. Because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. <laughs> it's you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. <laughs> Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. A Harlan Hogan VO1A microphone. Now, perhaps you didn't know this, but almost all of the equipment we use in voiceover was designed for making music. The VO1A is the only microphone specifically designed and tuned for voiceover. And you're hearing me on it right now. Now, obviously, the VO1A is very popular at voiceoveressentials.com, and Harlan has been running low. Until now. Harlan placed an order for a new supply of VO1As from MXL quite a while ago. Now, manufacturing them wasn't an issue, but getting them to the U.S. was, between COVID and shipping constraints and, of course, skyrocketing costs. Well, happy day, voiceover people. MXL informed Harlan that his order had arrived in Long Beach and was going through required quality control testing of each mic today. And by the way, although it's difficult, Harlan is keeping the price the same despite inflation and logistics costs. 
So if you've wanted one, now's the time to order your Harlan Hogan Signature Series VO1A voiceover mic today. Go to voiceoveressentials.com. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. All right, we're back with Rick Wasserman, and we're going to take another stab at this after going through this process that we shall all be going through whenever we get a script. You know, read it good, but <laughs> read it. get it right. Yeah. Uh, here's something else I want to try with you for sure. this next read. Okay. Um, I was doing a little bit of it during your first read. Uh, I think it's a really good uh, tip or trick to uh, consider that this is not a monologue. Right. Think of it more as a conversation. So. I'm going to be the other guy in this conversation. So you just say this. Say it as you are, and I'm going to react to it and let my reaction affect your read. Let's just try it. Okay. No, that's very effective. I mean, it's always like if you're talking to somebody, it would, you know, I've even done that. I'm like, sure. Well, what about that? And, you know, but, yeah. But if you want to play that game, that's, that works for me too. Yeah. So I'm going to start. I'm going to start. I'm going to say, Dan, so why would you even bother playing the lottery unless there's a huge jackpot? Well, you know, someday I might win millions playing the DC lottery. Maybe. Today I won four hundred and fifty dollars, which was perfect timing because Explain. just the other well, but just the other day I came across a six month old rescue dog. Oh and, and even though it was love at first sight, I oh. wasn't sure about the extra expense. Oh yeah, I see. But thanks to the DC lottery, I won a new best friend. Oh, and that's I was great. able to make a donation so that other people could have supplies they need when they take home their new friend. You paid it forward. That's right, which goes to show that no matter the size of the prize you win from the DC lottery, yeah. every win is a win. I love it. I love it. I think it makes it more interactive. I think it makes what you say more purposeful because you're not just saying it because it's on the page. You're saying it because it's in response to something. It creates a need. We may not know what that need is, but we'll hear it. We'll right. hear that there is a need, and that's everything. Excellent. All right, well, did I book it? Yeah, you booked it. Okay, good. That's, Dan, that's you <laughs> are bookable. <laughs> we we got a bunch of questions here for you now, Rick. Please, so, uh, please. George, go for it. First one in the queue comes from Terry Briscoe. Um, I've heard you get 10 seconds to make an impression on a commercial audition. Should you lead with your bold take or your straight read? Wow, that's a great question. That's so good. Obviously, there's no one answer for this, but I think it is important to turn in. My first take is usually my gut take, the one that makes the most sense to me, the way I would say it if I had the opportunity to direct myself. Um, then if they're asking for something that maybe doesn't make as much sense to me, I might put that second. But having said all that, when I'm in phase three, review, right? Work, play, and review. When I'm listening back and I'm reviewing, I try to be objective. I try to think like the producer and just listen to each take and then just pick the one that draws me in the most, the one that tells the clearest story. I don't care what I was thinking during each of those anymore. Now I'm not the actor anymore, I'm the editor and I'm trying to think of what's, what's going to make the best impression, what tells the clearest story, that goes first. All right. Excellent. From, uh, get the one there from, from Mike Max Goldberg. I got it. Um, is it more attractive to a talent agent when a voice actor is union when trying to get on the agent's roster? What does that even matter to an agent if a talent has a professionally produced demo that sounds great and is non-union? Yeah, that's, that's another great question. Well, there's all these great questions. Um, you know, great obviously, a yeah, great audience. Uh, 
It would depend on the agent. From agent to agent, there's no kind of one answer for that. But I do know that it is important for you to be union. That is, agents want you to get into union work. Um, it is sort of rarefied air. And the payment, of course, is usually more impressive, and it's uh, usually guaranteed. That is, if they don't pay you right away, the union gets on them, and you know, they're, they sick them on there. Uh, and and support you and get you your money. So, you know, you want that kind of work, especially if you're not dabbling in voiceover. It's not a hobby. If you're looking to earn a living wage doing this, I would join the union, and I would think an agent would want you to be in the union. Yeah, that's the thing about it. A lot of people try to, you know, when they come into the business, oh, I'm going to get an agent. And I don't, I don't, have to, don't have to work about getting all that work. Well, they forget yeah. that this is an entrepreneurial business, and you really have to go out and find that work yourself at first yeah and if you're doing really well the agents will come find you sure absolutely yeah. another one and this one's from jay horace black sure uh, he says hey rick how's your schedule looking for coaching <laughs> time for a checkup for me good to see you my man yeah jay's a tremendous guy and a client and uh uh he's he, he, he uh, well, apparently well he's he's at the audio body shop uh i think um Jay, uh, obviously, he got in touch with me today, and I'm happy to to chat with him. Jay's one of these guys that has a natural voice. He just has a gorgeous voice, nothing to do about it. And something, I don't know if he was aware of it when we first met, but he is a vocal doppelganger for Obama without mm. trying, without trying. Now, if he could try, he could sound more like Obama. But the cool thing is, is because it's not an exact match, but it's there when you listen to his voice, if you felt good about Obama, you feel good about listening to his voice. It sort of has a, a built-in warmth for a population. Uh, he's lucky. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I have to think about it next time I talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> um, this one's from Terry Briscoe. Terry again? Yeah, and it says, <laughs> I have a joke. And it says, mm. at Dan, I just wanted to say thank you for your recommendations on my specimen sample. I really feel like it helped at my sound a lot. This is not a paid advertisement. They, they, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe not. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> fresh cash in the mail. Yeah, yeah those are those are reasons. Last one in the uh, queue, and then maybe we'll get to talking about the tribus a little bit. Sure, we roll out. Um, Jeff Holman, our very own Jeff Holman, in the chat room says, "Do you ever add a lead in to the beginning of the copy?" Robert Clotworthy at Calmanson and Calmanson used to advocate that 10 years ago or so. Well, we sort of did that, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Uh, for our first read, I recommend what I would call, instead of lead-in, some people call it the moment before, I call it pre-life. Uh, that's hmm. what we would call it on stage. I would call it pre-life. What's your pre-life? What's happening just before? That way, like I say, it doesn't feel like a cold splash in a big pool, right? Uh, it's not yeah. so abrupt. You kind of Find, you get a little momentum and find your way into it with a bit more ease and authenticity. But for sure, when I'm in the booth, I'm using pre-life. And I have a little uh, template for pre-life, uh, and I recommend it. My template is I make sure to include the name of my partner. So if it was George, I'd make sure to say his name, and I'd make sure to say the action that I'm going to use. Remember, you are voice actors. Okay, and an actor must be in action. That's why you're called an actor, because you're in action. You must have a verb, you must be doing something to calm, to assure, to intrigue, uh, to seduce, to tease. You must be doing something. And I'd use that word. So my pre-life might be, George, I think you're gonna find this pretty exciting. So as soon as I say his name, I see him. And my ear asks me, is that how it sounds when you talk to George? And if it is, and I got a green light in my head, I keep going. And I say my action out loud. George, I think you're going to find this really exciting, to excite. I need to be doing that action now, not later, not somewhere deep into the commercial, but right now, so that when I start the commercial, I'm already doing my action. I'm already exciting someone. Now, that's my little template. Use your character, your partner's name, and use an action. Say them out loud, and make sure you take a breath before you begin the actual copy so you don't have a, a big um editing headache on your shoulders 
Yeah, I mean that was the follow up. But he he was saying you do record it, but you don't you don't do you submit that in, no. in the audition. You, you, nope. You definitely and, leave that out, right? And for the days where you had to audition in front of someone, then you have to do your pre life in your head. Hey, George, oh, I think you'll be right. excited about this, and yeah, then yeah. say yeah. it out loud. Yeah. Now, one of the other things that you, you've been you've been working diligently on is this thing called a tri booth. Now we yeah. you, we set one up here a couple of years ago before the pandemic when we could yeah. all like be in a small compressed space for, for Yeah, that's right. Uh how's that been doing? And and tell us a little bit how that came along. George was telling me before we started, it started with some straws. <laughs> <laughs> it did. That's it started with some yeah. some plastic drinking straws. It started when I was, you know, a, a voice uh, of AMC, and it had already been like a decade, and my career had been, I was doing theater, and a little bit of voiceover, and then those things swapped, and I was doing a lot of voiceover, and a little bit of theater, and then theater completely went away, because I was so busy doing voiceover. I'm not complaining, but that was the case. But inside this booth for so long, I started going a little bonkers, and I told my wife, I, I have to get outside of this booth, I have to go and be, I'm a social animal, I think, I discovered that being alone for so long, I need to talk to people, I need to be on stage. So I talked to George, my uh, friend and engineer, and I said, I need some sort of traveling booth, so if I get a job out of town, I can bring it. And I think we bought something, we found something that we had to have yeah. shipped, it was heavy. We tried and, several different things along yeah. the way, and uh, yeah, exactly. It was awkward, and the good news was I had George, who has tried a lot of products and, you know, n knew what worked and what didn't work. Uh, so uh, it was a real crapshoot. I was in the middle of Colorado, not near anything else, not near a studio. It was either going to work or not work. I was either going to lose my job at AMC or hold on to it. And it worked. I got to do a show mm. and I got to um, do my voiceover consistently. In fact, many of the producers didn't even know I left town. This uh, big thanks to George building a filter for me. That was a big part of it. So anyway, I come back and we have a little post-mortem. How did it work? It worked well, but it could be better. And each show I did after that, George and I would now on our own build a new booth. And at one point I built a little rectangular booth out of straws. And I was thinking, how can I make this light enough so I didn't have to ship it? I could bring it on an airplane with me, but still step inside it and be fully enclosed. And almost a mistake, I just pulled one of the straws out. So instead of having four legs, it had three. And the top and bottom were equilateral triangles instead of squares. And the other thing that I didn't know and couldn't possibly know is that when you get inside and you speak inside this equilateral triangle, um, the acoustics just seem to be great. Instead of being in a box, the fact that you're talking into a corner, I'm sure there's some brilliant sci you know, uh, technological scientific reason for that, but just sounds good. And George and I were uh, lucky that we finally got to bring this thing to VO Atlanta. We did that a week yeah. ago. Two years uh, delayed, but we made Two it. years delayed. We've been selling this really well for two years, and everyone who's purchased it had to buy it sight unseen. No one's actually been able to be in it before they bought it. So finally, at VO Atlanta, we had over 100 people go in it. And Sennheiser was kind enough to lend us a beautiful microphone, and they got to speak into that. And, and this is on an expo floor, and they were coming out going, it sounds great. I said, if it sounds great on an expo floor, imagine how it will sound in your hotel room and with a filter by George the Tech. Now you've got something special. Yeah, the filter is like a compliment, you know? We, we do everything we can to find quiet, obviously. That's, you still need to find as quiet an area as you can. It's not always going to be perfect, though, especially when you're traveling. If you get yeah. stuck in the, maybe the side of your hotel has a perfect view. Well, unfortunately, that's also facing the city and the street. And, uh, you know, it's a little noisier than you'd like. Yeah. Then um, with a little bit of the right this and that of processing, <laughs> uh, you could get a, a cleaned up file that your client will be happy with. Um, and it's a delicate balance of how much filtering, how much processing, et cetera, that we use. It's very, it's a very delicate balance, but we try to make that happen. And every time you get a booth, you, you can either get that, a filter, or you can also just do a 30 minute consultation with me. That's another option. If you're not even ready for the filter, you just know that you don't know, that you don't know what you need to do. You're not sure how the mic should be, where it should, if you really want to have someone go through the final setting up of the booth and the placement and all that stuff, then you have access to me as well. So yeah, so that was sort of the ace of our ace up our sleeve that not only would you get a booth that would work while you travel 
or at home. You know, when the pandemic happened, you know, originally this booth was for people who wanted another booth. I, I need a booth on my yacht. Well, okay, well, then you take the tri booth with you. But then the world shut down and you couldn't go to a studio. The studio shut down. So people started calling and saying, listen, I don't need to travel, but can I just use the tri booth as a booth? Yeah, it's a booth. You could use it as a booth. Uh, so uh, our clientele changed. And um, I'm very proud that we were able to have a product available for people uh, that wasn't thousands of thousands of dollars that, that they could put up uh, or put away in less than 10 minutes and that weighs uh, 40 pounds. Um, yeah, that was a tricky thing. You know, we had to figure out the perfect, like the Goldilocks, right? Between something that was truly functional, that really did perform well, but still could be packed away and checked and know you're not going to get an over, overweight fee on your bags or something like that. Um, had to make it so, just under 40 pounds or under yeah 40. yeah well yeah we, in the bag and everything we had to go you know obviously under 50 so we wanted to keep it so we've we have added weight in one area the blankets we actually added more weight to them over time gotten them heavier yeah and then we removed some weight from the interior framing we found thinner wall tubing so that we could shave a little bit of weight off the booth and and still keep that weight so yeah. it, it, it it's ever refining over yeah, the years a lot of r d so the booth that was on your show is a different booth than we sell now it is a bit sexier like oh. you dan oh thank you appreciate that well <laughs> rick as always it's a pleasure having you on this show and this was this was a a very fast hour of a lot of information if people want to get a hold of you, where can they get a hold of you uh, to get some coaching or to get themselves to try booth? All right, where's the bottom third? Come on, show, put it up there. There it is. Get in touch. So here's something. Uh, if you're interested in the Tri Booth, you can email at info at tribooth.com. There's a phone number for Tri Booth. It is the same for Bookable. And there is the Tri Booth website. Check it out. We have, uh, we frequently have discounts. Uh, we're selling internationally. Uh, we've got, there's some socials going on here. How nice. Yeah, we are this is at great. the Tri Booth everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So you can find us that way. And then, of course, if you're interested in coaching, uh, that company is called Bookable Voiceover. And you can find us at bookablevo.com. You can contact me at rick at bookablevo.com. Also, I've got some webinars coming up. Uh, two webinars coming up. There's webinar one on June 14th The Four Things You Need to Know to Earn a Living. Wage doing voiceover. Um, there's more than four, and we'll go over those. <laughs> and then uh, the second webinar uh, in October, right near my birthday, so you can all celebrate that. Uh, and George, George's birthday too. Uh, things you can do right now to get more bookings, to increase your, your booking rate. Uh, and you can subscribe, and we'll let you know when those things are, or you just sign up anytime you want. Outstanding. Well, Rick, that was, that was just a great hour. I really appreciate that. And people should get in touch with you and... Uh, Good luck with the Tri Booth. Good luck Thank with everything you. else you're doing. And we'll talk to you again real soon. Good to see you, Dan. Thank uh, you. All right. George and I will be right back to wrap things up and get ready for Tech Talk right after these messages. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do, then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, VoiceActorWebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. It's time. Yes, it is for a little spot for Source Connect. Source Connect is an amazing tool created by Source Elements that allows you to connect to your studios, their clients around the world, and do it with very high, consistent quality. 
it's very, very loved by producers and engineers because the audio that they receive from you is recorded directly into the session real time. The, the client can be listening in and they can make approvals and they can edit the thing on the fly. It's all about workflow, everybody. And this is a tool that's now firmly entrenched into so many workflows at the top level of the paying gigs of voiceover. So if you want to get set up with it, head over to source-elements.com and get a 15-day free trial. Give it a shot on your system. And if you need help, reach out. Their support is second to none. Best in the business, I'm telling you. Thanks so much, Source Elements. Let's wrap this up. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Alas Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. Yes, you are. And uh, if you're watching us live right now, hang out for Tech Talk. That's the really fun stuff. Not that Rick was great. I mean, that was a fabulous. It was a uh, fire hose uh, of information. <laughs> <laughs> Drink for the fire hose, kids. Ah, oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, next week on this very show, we're going to have Tech Talk number 77, which we're about to record. So hang out if you're watching live and you get to ask your questions. So anyway, uh, who are our donors of the week? Hey, I see a few a name or two in there that's new. I see Robert Leadham, Stephen Chandler, Casey Clack. That's a new one. Jonathan Grant, Thomas Pinto, Shelley Avellino, Patty Gibbons, Rob Ryder, Greg Thomas, a Doctor Voice, Antland Productions, Uncle Roy, and Martha Yes I Con Con. Yay! All righty. Make sure you join our mailing list, too. Uh, we're over 800 people on that list now. It's slowly growing. But you can you can sign up on our website, vobs.tv, and you can let see what's going on. Email still works. That's right. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, you know, And you can find us at theguys at vobs.tv. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, too. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActorWebsites.com, and JMC Demos. Demos. Don't forget, you can find Dan Leonard online over at HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. And I'm George the dot Tech. That's right. All right, let's stay tuned for Tech Talk. In the meantime, hey, look, this is not an easy business, but we're here to help you out and make sure that you get it right because if it sounds good it is good i'm dan leonard and i'm george whittem and this is voiceover body shop or vo b s all right thanks to jeff holman in the chat room and sue merlino for all the work she does and definitely lee penny for just being lee penny we'll see you next week guys (laughs) 